Hi and welcome to another video for turning the page. Today we're going to be making a graffiti style window poster and for this you're going to need things like plain or maybe coloured papers, crayons would be great, sharpies or other felt pens would be great. You're going to need a pencil and a rubber, you might use glue and scissors and you might like to have a little black fine liner. Um, some people are going to receive a pack for this activity uh, if you're lucky enough to receive the pack, you should have everything in there that you'll need. If you don't have a pack, you should be able to work with just some paper from around the house and some coloured pens. So you don't necessarily need anything really special. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to write uh, whatever text you want for your poster. So for mine, I've written, I love Grimes Thought, but if you live in Furvale, you could change it to Furvale or, or wherever you live. First thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to very lightly in pencil put that text onto your paper first and you're going to want to do it so light that you're able to rub it out afterwards. Um, so you can barely see this but I've written I heart Grimes Thorpe. It took me quite a few goes to manage to fit every single letter of Grimes Thorpe because it's quite a long word on the page. And then once you've done that you're going to want to apply some of the sort of basic graffiti techniques that graffiti artists use to make your letters into a graffiti style. So you've got the letter I here. What you're going to want to do is just to start making it thicker. And it might be that you add some arrows to the ends of some parts of your letters like this. So I've put uh, an arrow on the eye. You quite often see this in graffiti. You might want to put some sort of like scuff marks on there, or little marks on the edge of things to kind of rough it up a bit. My heart, what you want to maybe have a go at is um, playing around with overlapping. So I'm going to do my heart, but I'm going to make it look like it's going behind the eye. And again, you're going to want to get um, you're going to want to get your design ready in pencil first before you go on to using pen. So there we go, I've got my heart. I'm going to put a few dots on one side of that. And then with the lettering, some of the um, graffiti techniques that you'll see are things like, um, one I've already mentioned, using arrows. But graffiti artists play around quite a lot with scales, so you might want to make some of your letters really big. You might want to make some of them really small. You might want to take chunks out of some of them. So I'm going to show you a few of those. So we've got my G here. I've put an arrow on. I'm going to put some scuff marks on. I'm going to make my R pretty big. I think I'll put a, an arrow on the end there. I could play around with the scale here and make the, um, the hole in the R really small, like that. And then I've got my next letter is an I, so I'm going to make it go underneath. And I think I'll do a little arrow at the bottom as well. The M I'm going to do small to mix it up. And I'm going to make a little bite mark out of the side here, just to make it a bit playful. I think I'll do the same on my E, so I'm going to do a part of my E, but then I'm going to take a bite mark out of it like that. So I'm overlapping, I'm playing with scale, I'm putting arrows in, putting bite marks in, making a little scuff mark. I just make my scuff mark with two lines going one way and then two lines going the opposite way. I could do my S. I made the bottom of my S really big there. I think I'm going to make my T a bit oversized so it's coming out the top. I think I'll put a bite mark on it. And then you might want to do some uppercase and some lowercase. So you you know you can be completely playful with how you do this. So I think I'll do a lowercase h just to mix it up a bit. I'm gonna play with the size of the hole in the O again, so I'm gonna make it really tiny. I'll do an uppercase R just to mix it up. Let's 
my pee. Oops. <laughs> and obviously, if it goes a bit wrong at this stage with a marker pen, it's a bit hard to change it. But if it does go wrong, you can always just find a way to kind of um, incorporate it into the design, pretend it was supposed to be like that. So put a few more marks on it, maybe some dotting. And there we've got it. And then at that stage, you're gonna to want to make sure it's dry and then just very carefully rub out your pencil. And I do find that sometimes when people are rubbing out that they um, fold their page and make a big crease in it. So the best way to avoid that is to hold your fingers apart like this and rub in between your fingers. And that way the paper is held down by this finger and that thumb. And if you're doing that bit, you can hold your fingers either side of where you're rubbing. Keep moving your hand around. So I'm not gonna rub all of that out now, but you get the idea. So here's one I've done on uh, orange paper. Ah, and actually something's happened. So my um, marker pen, my these are Sharpies, has gone through onto the page behind. And what I meant to mention at the beginning is that you might want to put down some scrap paper or newspaper underneath your paper in case it goes through, because that does sometimes happen. So actually, it's come through here, but it looks quite nice, and I might turn those little marks into some dots. So that's one way of incorporating a mistake. So there we go. So this is one that I made earlier. I've played around with the scale. I've done some overlapping. I've done some little scuff marks. I've done quite a few little bite marks. quite like those, and that's quite fun. And then what I've started to do is I've started to use my pencil cranes instead of my pens to do a bit of a shadowing effect here. And this can really make your letters stand out. So, what I recommend for this, let's do the R here. What I recommend for this is that next to the letter you do the colour really quite dark and dense to begin with. And then as you get further away, you, you take the pressure off and you fade it out so it just blends into the colour of the background. And as you can see, I've used orange paper this time. So let me show you again. So you do it really dark right next to the letter. And then you just keep going, but as you go, you slowly take the pressure off more and more until it becomes really faint. And it starts to look as though the letter is standing out from the background. So I'm just going to do it quite quickly to show you this one letter. Now you get a real sense that that, um, that arrow part is standing out in front of the I and the M there. So I'm just doing the lighter bits here. And you could do this with a felt pen. You could just do an outline with a felt pen, but you wouldn't be able to fade it out like this. But I'll show you how you can do a slightly different technique with a pen. So there we've done that. But don't forget as well, when you do letters that have holes in the middle, like an R, to do the shadowing on that part as well. So really dark next to the letter, and then getting lighter into the middle, like so. And you can really take your time doing that. I'm not gonna do it here, obviously, because the R goes behind the G. You can take your time doing that. You might wanna do something similar inside the letter, if you feel like it. Um, I wonder what color will show up. Maybe I'll try this sort of pinky red. <clears throat> so it could be that you do it dark on the sides of your letter and then fade into the middle. And then the letter itself has got a bit of a 3D effect. And that's up to you. And that might show up a little bit better on this white one. So if I was gonna do my G, for example, instead of putting the shadowing behind the letter, I can put some shadowing on the actual letter itself to make the letter itself look a bit more real. A lot of um, really good graffiti artists 
We really managed to make their letters look very 3D so that they really stand out. So then we do it dark on the edge of that letter and then lighter into the middle like that. So you've got a bit of a 3D effect happening there. Now if you wanted to do, if you didn't have colouring pencils or you wanted to do it with pen instead, um, let's see, try a blue. We could do the R, just rub out the pencil on the R here. What we could do is we could do a layer of a colour in our marker pen. Make sure you protect your table, remember, because it goes through. A layer of another colour in a marker pen around it. And as I said, you can't fade it out with a pen. You can't reduce the pressure and make it faint. But you could use some marks to give the impression of it um, kind of fading away. So what you could do, once you've got your colour all the way around, is you could just do some lines coming out from the letter like this. And all the way around. So it sort of gives a bit of an impression of that letter uh, popping out of the page a bit more. And when you finish your poster, it'd be really cool if you put it up in your window for other people in your area to see the poster that you've made celebrating your area. I think that'd be really nice. So there's one way of doing it with pen, or you might prefer the effect that you get with pencil. So once you've got the text for your graffiti style window poster. It's really up to you how you finish it off. One thing that I like to do is I like to cut out the lettering that I've got, which is what I've done here, and stick it on a different coloured background. So when I, when I cut out my letters, I left quite a big um, border of orange around the letters. So uh, graffiti isn't about being neat, it's about being sort of playful. So I've cut out that and I've cut out that. You can see I've done the rest of my shadowing here on my letters. You can really take your time over that and spend uh, longer than me on it. And then I'm just playing around with what angle I want my letters to be at on this, or, uh, on this pink background. I think the pink really makes the orange stand out. So it might be that I do it like that. Could even go crazy and have it coming off the side of my paper. No reason it has to fit on. It's really up to you. I think quite like the letters like that and the heart and eye like that so I could stick that down. And it might be then that you want to do some drawings or you want to create a border or you want to take some images of places from around, uh, around where you live and put them in the background or you might just want to keep it simple and just have the text and the eye heart. So it's totally up to you. So that's um, a few techniques of how to do graffiti style window poster. I hope that you'll put them up in your window for other people to see and show your love for your area and I hope you have a really good time making your poster. <laughs>